Hello everyone, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator in VR inside the HP Reverb G2. Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you so much, first of all, to everyone's support on the channel. It's been amazing and, and you know, I think 2021 will be a great year for VR uh, and flight simulation, I really do. Now we are in a freeware bush plane today. This is the Savage gravel bush plane quite an unusual name <laughs> but uh, yeah it really is an incredibly powerful little beast of a bird this it's got a 250 horsepower engine and massive tundra tires and as you're about to see here it can take off within its own length literally we're now airborne already <laughs> amazing that but yeah this video is just basically a bit of a recap on some of the little tweaks that I've done since my last videos and uh, including a bit of uh, love for the Rift S as well. We're actually in the Reverb G2 today, but uh, I know some of you have been struggling with the Rift S, particularly as it's been very jittery for you, and you've had a few issues, I think, I've had loads of comments uh, about a problem with the stencil image being shown in VR. Now, that is because you need to opt in to the beta test channel in your Oculus software. I'll put a window uh, of where you need to find that on the screen now. So there you are. That is what that is where you need to find it, and basically that will uh, solve your issues with that horrible st uh, stencil image. Uh, I don't know why it's still there. To be honest, it was something that was an issue in the beta for ages. But actually, whilst we're on the Rift S, I know some of you have been struggling with the sort of jittering and motion projection issues. Well, I mean. Um, what I can say there is that some of you think that the OpenXR developer tool is actually going to be uh, helping your Rift S. Well, actually, it won't make any difference at all because what you need to do is download the Oculus Tray tool and from within there, you can disable motion projection if it's a bit jittery or you can super sample the Rift S, which I do recommend setting it to about 1.1, 1.2. And that way, you can then up the render scale in the flight sim itself. But, you know, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a particular setup video for the Rift S as well. I'll gladly uh, sort of share the knowledge I have uh, if it helps out. Look at this, look. We're just flying over the uh, neighbouring harbour there. Beautiful rocks. I feel like I can kick them. They're that clear. And we've got some fishing boats there as well. This is a... We're just off the coast of uh, mainland Japan and Asobo has uh, worked their magic in this area and it's beautiful. This is part of my world tour series and I thought we could just go for a bit of a flight around this small island that has a volcano sitting right at the top there. Look at that. Now in the Reverb G2, I can tell you now that all those colours, the greens and the blues, just pop out so well. They look incredible in this headset. and. To also let you know, I am now running a render scale in the sim itself of 100, <laughs> which I think is crazy. That's with a 1080 Ti card. Now, of course, in an area like this, I'll be able to get really good performance. But if I'm, say, at London Heathrow, I'll knock that down to about 80%, which is still way higher than I could do before. And that is thanks to that OpenXR runtime sort of developer tool, which I will link in the description below in case you haven't downloaded it yet. You should be able to, if, you, if you're running the updated version, have a render scale slider, which is a, sort of a separate manual mode that, you know, whichever sort of setting you decide, make sure that you use the manual mode because that stops the uh, sort of uh, Windows Mixer LT projection method auto adjusting that for you whilst you're in the sim because unless you're getting a really smooth consistent 50 60 frames per second which let's face it no one is in VR it's not very helpful you're better off manually adjusting that and mine is currently set to 70% in that app and a hundred in the sim itself and that to me uh, seems to be the perfect sweet spot for my system which is an 8600k i5 running at 5 gigahertz as I say, with a little mini 1080 Ti 11 gig card. And the, you know, the upshot is it's running really well. I can see all the gauges fine. I mean, you know, this is analog gauges, so you can see them better. But I mean, if I say 
took a flight in a TBM or the longer tube with the G3000 uh, layout, which is very tiny text. At 100% render scale in the sim and 70% in OpenXR, that seems to be a really good sort of, uh, you know, sweet spot that I can cope with. Anyway, you know, sometimes I think it might be easier to actually do your PPL to actually get a real pilot's license than uh, all the information you need to uh, set up the sim. <laughs> you need like a degree in IT. It is a complicated affair, guys. And I understand a lot of your frustrations. I've been getting quite a lot of comments from very passionate people, that's, uh, shall I say, you know, saying that it's not working for them. And I really do. I, f I feel your frustration. I just, all I can say really is that, uh, you know, to show you from my own perspective and any tips and tricks and settings that I come across that may help, I will certainly be sure to post them. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed so you can stay tuned for any new developments. And to be honest, this sim is changing by the day in terms of performance tweaks. So, you know, this video might already be out of date by the time it goes live. But I'll do my best to share as much information as I possibly can. But in the headset, I mean, I'm using the Windows Mixed Reality Mirror, which is a bit rubbish, to be honest, and it will look a bit jittery. But it's very smooth inside the sim itself. Right, let's have a look outside. That is an absolutely gorgeous view. Oh, wow. I often say, guys, that uh, running this sim at ultra on a flat screen doesn't look nowhere near as good as this sim on medium settings in VR inside the Revo G2. It just doesn't compare. Because I'm right now actually here in my little bush plane and it feels fantastic. Now just to say a massive thank you to the VR pilot. He's a great YouTuber. Please check his channel out if you haven't already. He's the one who actually uh, basically showed this uh, little freeware plane first. And he landed on top of a mountain. I'm not going to attempt that today. I'm, I'm a bit of a wuss. I'm not going to try it. But uh, yeah, check his channel out. Fantastic content. Very high quality. And he actually has a 3090 card and runs both the Quest 2 and uh, the Reverb G2 as well. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is fantastic. Right, guys. I think that's just going to be it for us. We're just going to start heading back to the, uh, the airfield. And what we'll do, actually, we'll just buzz these uh, fishing boats here. The detail in this sim is absolutely astonishes me, honestly. It's just, when I look down there and at all those trees and that, that cove there and the cliff edges, I really feel the height. It's fantastic. It really is. And it's only going to get better this year. So just to recap, guys, I am using the OpenXR app which I'll put in the link in the description below if you haven't got it already, at 70% on my custom render scale slider and 100 in the sim itself. The result? Well, it speaks for itself, I think. So much detail. Now, just to let you know, I'm using Phil's Authenticate Spitfire control yoke. Now, I realise this isn't a Spitfire, but I'm finding I'm using it more and more for general aviation aircraft as well, because it just feels so precise. And you can make one of these all on your own. All you need is a 3D printer. It's a fantastic venture, and I really feel that this year, it's just going to explode. There we go. Three-point landing. Oh, there we go. Right in the store there. Ha, fantastic. So there you are, guys. That's just a very quick update. Uh, I wish you all a wonderful year. And there's going to be plenty of exciting content coming on the channel. I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye for now.